boys and girls, it's time for some math. So let's make sure we are prepared for the day. You're going to need your whiteboard and a marker and something to erase with. And then you will need your lesson 19 problem set, okay? It has hearts and circles on it. Make sure you're on the lesson 19 problem set. We actually skipped the lesson, so you're gonna have to pass some pages that will be blank, and that's okay. Okay, so double check, make sure you get your math book on the lesson 19 problem set page with the hearts and the circles, okay? And then you'll just need something to write with. Let's get started. Today our I can statement says, I can show two parts make a whole. And we've been doing a lot of this in a lot of different ways, and today we're gonna learn a new way. I can show two parts make a whole, okay? That's just like saying, Oh, I could use a number bond to show two parts make a whole, or I could use a number sentence to show two parts make a whole, okay? Or I could show a picture to show two parts make a whole, okay? So, we're actually going to be doing using the number bond today and number sentences, and I'll get to that after we do our application problem. Now our application problem today, boys and girls, it might seem long, but we will work through it together. So grab that whiteboard, grab your marker, and let's get working. All right, boys and girls, <clears throat> today, let's see, we have Dylan who has four cats and two dogs at home. Sammy has one mama bunny and six baby bunnies at home. Draw a number bond showing the total number of pets each household has. Then write a statement to tell if two households have an equal number of pets. Wow, did you see how long that was? Let me read it one more time and then we'll think about how we're gonna attack this. Dylan has four dogs and two cats at home. Sammy has one mom but bunny and six baby bunnies at home. Draw a number bond showing the total number of pets in each household. Oh boy. So when I heard that word each, that tells me, all right, we're gonna just go ahead and divide this into two parts. So we can see Dylan over here on one side and Sammy over on the other side. So will you do that? I just drew a straight line right down the middle of my board. I'm gonna put a D on this side to, sh to show Dylan and what pets he has. And I'm going to put an S on this side to show what pet Sammy has. Now it says to draw a number bond showing the total number. Usually we'd go right into drawing a picture, but this wants us to show a number bond. So underneath Dylan, I'm going to draw myself a number bond, and you should too. Under Sammy, I'm going to draw myself a number bond, and you should too. Okay, go ahead and get those two number bonds. All right, now sometimes when we're reading story problems, we might have to read them three or four times before we have all the information we need. So now I have these empty number bonds, I need to put something on them. Let's read again about Dylan. Dylan has four cats and two dogs at home. Ooh, so that doesn't give us the whole number, right? It doesn't give us all the pets he has, it gives us the dogs and the cats. So, did you catch how many cats he had? He had four cats. And what about dogs? He had two dogs. So he has four dogs, or four cats and two dogs. Hmm, two parts make a whole. Well, let's see. What is four and two more? Let's use a strategy we know, like counting on, to solve that problem. Four, five, six. Four, five, six. Four and two more six. So Dylan has six pets. Let's find out about Sammy. Let's reread about Sammy. Sammy has one mama bunny and six baby bunnies. Oh boy. One mama bunny and six baby bunnies is going to give us the total of all of Sammy's pets. So what is six and one more? I like to use the bigger number first because then you just have to add one. What comes after six? Six Seven, you got it. All right, so let's see. 
We need a statement to tell if the two houses have equal numbers of pets. So here's what we're asking ourselves. Leave some space down here. Does six equal seven? Is six the same as seven? And oh no, first graders, they are not the same. So that means they are not equal. Okay, then we, we, we would write the statement. They are not equal. Okay, and you don't have to write that super duper fast right now. It's okay. Don't rush to go ahead. We talked about it, so that's awesome. Because we know that four and two does not equal the same thing as one and six, right? If we wrote it like this too, it is not equal. Four plus two does not equal one plus six. Okay, they are not the same. Six is not the same as seven. All right, first graders, good work. All right, let's go ahead and erase our board. Then give me five so that I know you're ready to learn. I'm going to get a quick sip of water. And I am ready to rock. Okay, still using our whiteboard. Boys and girls, did you know there are four ways that we can write a number sentence when we're adding? There are four ways. That is a lot of ways, okay? So let's say <clears throat> we had, uh, why don't we use Dylan's cats and dogs as our first example? I'm gonna draw a picture here, so I'm gonna show four to represent his um, cats. And then I'm gonna do two X's to represent his two dogs. Now under that, boys and girls, with me, will you draw a number bond on your whiteboard? And you're gonna need a good amount of extra space to write these number sentences with me, okay? <clears throat> All right, here we go. Now we see two parts, right? Some circles some X's or some cats and some dogs. Okay, we can write this in our number bond, right? Four and two, just like we did, and that gives us six. Okay, if I were to say, first graders, write this number bond as a number sentence, here's what you might say. All right, well, I'll take my parts, and I'll write four plus two equals six. Go ahead and write that one with me. And just like we've learned early in the year, if I said, first graders, write another number sentence that uses the same numbers. We would take our parts and do what? Switch them, flip flop. So then we'd have two plus four equals six. Now, we have one, two number sentences. Remember Mrs. Garris said, did you know there are four number sentences we can write when we're adding? Yikes, a lot of writing, but super important for us to know. I have told you before that when we are reading in math, we can go left to right, or we can switch it all the way around, or we can read right to left, okay? So, we cannot um, separate our two parts. Our two parts have to be together with the plus sign, and our whole number has to be with the equal sign when we are adding, okay? So watch. I'm gonna flip-flop the whole number sentence. Six, that's my whole number. It has to go with the equal sign. So my equal sign is going first. Six equals four plus two. Yowzers! Now I can do the same thing. I can start with my whole number again. But now I can follow my rule about my parts can flip-flop. So six also equals the same as two and four. Wow, do you see that? This is what we're going to be working on today. You will be writing number bonds and number sentences to show and represent a picture. Okay, do you wanna try one more with me? And then we'll move on to practicing a few in our problem set. Okay, I'm going to use circles and X's again. I'll start with my X's this time. Why don't we do four X's? And how many circles do you see? Mm 
You see five? All right, well, let's put them in our number bond. I see two parts. I see X's. I see circles. And I need to figure out what all together what that makes. So I can either count up all my <clears throat> symbols up there, or I can use math in my head. I can use my counting on strategy. I could add four more to five. Remember, Mrs. Garris likes to use the bigger number and then count up. So if we did that, we'd say five, six, seven, eight, nine. Four and five make nine. All right, good stuff. Now let's get working on our number sentences. Go ahead and write a number sentence that shows this number bond. We first take our parts. Four plus five equals nine. Okay, then what do we do? We flip-flop those parts. So five goes first this time. Five plus four equals nine. This is a lot of writing, first graders, but please make sure you're following, following along with me. Actually writing them down helps your brain to remember how to do it. Okay, now this is where we take our whole number and we totally spin this around. And we start with our whole number, nine equals what? We could put four and five, four plus five, or nine equals flip flop. Watch that again, first grader, flip flop, five plus four. Woo, what an amount of work. Good. Go ahead and finish writing up those number sentences. Remember, we have the parts coming first on two of them, and then we have the whole number that comes first on two of them. Our whole number always stays with the equal sign. Notice, my whole number is always right next to that equal sign. Always, always. And my parts are always together with their plus sign. Okay, awesome. Go ahead and erase your board now, boys and girls, and we're going to go ahead and snag up our, our map book. Find that Lesson 19 problem set page that has the hearts and the circles. And before we even start, first graders, I'm going to have you, you... Some of these books might not be exactly the same as mine. I have to turn the page. Some of you might not have to turn the page to get to this page where you see all the foods again and the plates. Go ahead, you can take your pencil and you can put an X through that page to remind yourself. I don't have to do that today. Okay, awesome sauce. We're gonna go back then to those hearts and circles. Okay, I'm going to do the first one with you, then the rest you will show me on Seesaw, okay? Let's do the first one together. They put a couple of our whole numbers here for us. I know they're the whole numbers because look who's right next to it, the equal sign. All right, here we go. I see some hearts and some circles. How many hearts do you see? Let's start with our number bond. I see three hearts. I'm gonna put it in my number bond as a part. How many circles do you see? I see two circles as well, good work. Now three and two make, hmm, three, four, five. So five is going to be my whole number. Oh, I could have gotten that right off the bat because they have it here for me too. All right, so let's start with our number sentences now. I see a plus sign with two empty boxes, so I know my parts are going to go there, especially since my whole number is already here. So let's do three and two equals five. Now I see I need parts here again, but I can't do the same one. I need to flip flop. So two will come first this time. Two plus three equals five. Now this is where they take the whole thing and they spin it around. And we're starting with our whole number now because the equal sign comes first. So we have five, our whole number equals parts three plus two. Okay, can you write this last one on your own? 
Start with your whole number. Put your two parts. <clears throat> should have five equals. You should have flipped those parts. Five equals two plus three. And that is all four. One, two, three, four of the number sentences you can write when we're adding with this number bond. Awesome work. Now, letter B and letter C, the last two are for you to do on your own. And I will also be looking forward to seeing your exit ticket on Seesaw First Graders. Your exit ticket is this one with the hearts and the smiley faces. So good luck. Please let me know if you need any extra help. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Happy working.